What is up, people? I'm going to let some people chime in. go got some people coming in how's everybody doing feel free to uh, drop any questions you have in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them and keep you entertained for the next two hours or however long you decide to stay all right I'm gonna try to make some real headway in this piece this time uh, I'm kind of upset with myself that it's taken so long uh, but you know, you want something to be quality, it's hard to rush it. But there's also a breaking point where it's like, just, just let's get going. Uh, so how's everybody doing? Everyone having a good evening? Or daytime, depending on your location on the planet? I just had a long day of work myself, so, uh, whoa. What is going on? Ah. Oh. Derp. There we go. Cintiq was bumping the bumping the button. All right. Oh yeah, I forgot to turn that off this time. All right, man. I guess it's uh. Yeah, it's been a little bit, it's been two weeks. Uh, did some work on this uh, in between, now and then. Um, but, <laughs> like practically everyone else on the planet, I've uh, been tackled by this uh, new cold, unfortunately. I'm just getting over it. It's this terrible sinus slash cough thing that, ugh, it's just been going around everywhere. Not fun. Um, still, <clears throat> still, uh, Still dealing with it, but almost better. Almost there. Uh, anyway. So, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to let me know. Gummy Tomato asked, uh, am I going to 3D print this? And they said, it looks awesome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, this is going to be 3D printed eventually. Uh, hopefully sooner than later. <laughs> That's the goal. Uh, and thanks for the kind words. Uh, yeah, this is uh, concept work that I was doing for uh, myself when I was working on The Lion King. And this is similar to what I uh, delivered. And unfortunately, it wasn't uh, able to make it into the movie. So this was going to be the volume that... Uh, they would use like Houdini particles to kind of, you know, form this shape so that, you know, we saw Mufasa kind of materialize out of the, uh, out of the clouds. Um, and it kind of created this whole other, you know, really cool arc of this shooting star kind of entering our atmosphere and colliding with these storm clouds and forming him. It was like this really epic, this epic design for the scene. And it's just a bummer. It was way too, too involved for the last month of production. So it didn't make it, unfortunately. Do, do, do. Someone else asked, uh, hi, do you sketch first or go right into it? Uh, it depends. Oh, thanks. Thanks for the nice words. Um, it depends. Uh, it really, I usually just start in 3D. I mean, I might sketch out a really rough idea if I get something like a really, you know, inspired spark of something. Uh, and then, you know, want to carry on with it. But uh, typically, um, I, you know, ideation, you know, that creation and ideas kind of forming together. I typically do that all in 3D. Um, you know, but it, it also varies if I'm doing my own thing. Yeah. I just, I just jump into the ZBrush and, um, do whatever I can to get my idea out as fast as possible and then refine it. But if I'm working in a studio and they have concept art 
and actually I didn't have an, really any direct concept art for this. There was, I mean, they, they showed me references of what they were working with before, um, you know, before I really got started and, uh, and they weren't really happy with what they had either. So that's why they brought me in. Um, but, uh, you know, so it depends, it depends on the project, but yeah, typically I just jump into 3d and have fun. So at least I can get some satisfaction out of at least printing and finishing what could have been in a sense, you know, but it's always, uh, as I've said on the previous streams, it's always kind of a, an interesting, uh, task to 3d print or to, I mean, to 3d model, uh, clouds like this. Cause it's normally a, uh, you know, a volumetric solver or something in Houdini, um, that would be used of course to actualize this for visual effects. Um, but that was the thing. That was the the challenge here was to create a uh, a form, a container that would be the volume sort of distribution for uh, for the particles to f fill out, and you know, trying to go for that in between sculpted but not too sculpted look, you know, amorphous but not too amorphous. It's it's challenging, dude. It's it's uh, especially you know with a project like this where it's like you really want it to be impactful and beautiful, and so I feel like I got there with the. Um, with the concept art that I was able to, to do using the other models I took beyond this for, uh, at the studio. Um, I really felt like I got pretty, pretty, I showed pretty accurately what I saw in my head and everyone seemed to love it. And it's just, it was just too much for one month to put it together. So it's just a bummer anyway. So I decided on uh, really trying to feel like before I had this originally, even when I was designing it, also because we knew that we were going to be shot from mostly one angle for this. Um, I had this sort of laid out and a much more left to right, just horizontal, kind of more flat, like a uh, chop line right straight back here. But now the more I thought about it, the more I really want this to kind of wrap around the back and kind of um, kind of just form a nice, you know, a nice kind of circular shape or ovoid kind of shape. And then, uh, you know go with that so Mufasa is really kind of leading leading as the apex of the clouds you know really kind of pushing everything else forward or pulling I should say um pulling out of everything a bit but it's still like there's some you know rather desperate forms here of like curly Q kind of shapes and then these kind of really billowing shapes and so I want to kind of try to blend those together a little bit better and have them kind of like what I did down here on the lower left to try to get that to um kind of feel like a more organic way of things kind of flowing into each other rather than just like boom 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 just one thing and layered on top of another so so I'm curious how did everybody find this stream for those who uh, wouldn't mind sharing is it you guys follow ZBrush uh, their channels a lot or friends recommend or you all working in the industry too, and just like to, it's, it's interesting. Uh, my friends at work were asking, um, like just how, how this works and you know, what happens. And I kind of related it back to, uh, what some buddies of mine and I would do a lot. And I, we just haven't done it as much cause we're all busier and I'm sure some of them are still doing it, but I just, I'm just so tired when I come home from work. A lot of times I, I uh, have to force myself to jump back on the computer. If I have to do something else for a personal project or like stuff for my short film now, I, I really have to push myself. But, um, this, uh, this sort of is, is a bit more natural for me because uh, some good friends of mine, we'd always, from everyone who was working, we, we either crossed paths in the same studio at one point or another or just met through, you know, networking at SIGGRAPH or wherever. Anyway, uh, we would all jump on Google Hangouts and we would all sculpt together. So there'd be like five or six or whatever, how many of us. And uh, we would all just be doing our own personal projects like this, all working in ZBrush or, you know, some, of, some other guys would be working in other programs. But uh, we would just kind of share, you know, because a lot of us kind of miss that semi-social aspect of when you're in uh, university. A lot of times you'll be in an art lab and, you know, it'll be 
amongst other artists who are working on computers and doing similar work or maybe sometimes often very different, but um, you're all kind of, you know, in that same groove and trying to just, uh, you know, it's like working at a cafe sometimes. When I can, I'll take my um, my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro and I'll just go work on personal stuff at a cafe. And it's nice to kind of be like semi-social. <laughs> it's like a lot of us, a lot of this work is often, um, you know, it's, it's, it's often a very solo venture, but it can get kind of lonely or, you know, sometimes it can get a little old. So it's nice to shake it up a little bit and, you know, get out somewhere and kind of chat with people as you work a little bit. So anyway, Google Hangouts were great for that when we were, uh, when all of us were doing that. Um, so I kind of miss that, but this is a nice way to kind of simulate that sort of a little bit. Let's see. Someone said they found the stream because they follow Pixelogic on here. Recent grad, full sale, art program. Try to watch as many streams as I can to pick up all the tips and tricks. Cool, man. Or girl. <laughs> nice. Well, I hope, I hope there's something useful in this for you, or I hope you at least enjoy it. And Pixelogic's awesome. I love ZBrush, obviously, and uh, the people there are good people, I gotta say. My first roommate uh, when I moved to LA uh, was Solomon Blair, actually. For those who know who that is over at Pixo, great guy. Really helped me uh, just get my feet underneath me when I got out here. So, Pixo hires uh, are some good people. Facebook reminded somebody. Nice. <laughs> That's why this is deforming weird thoughts, so this is triangulated. So like triangulation is great, you know, when you want to decimate something, reduce its uh, poly count, but that's also best when it's um, when it's near completion. Uh, in this case, um, for better deformation and sculpting, I'm gonna quadratify the sucker with the remesher. Hmm. Let's see what this gives us. Whoa, questions. Uh, someone is starting to 3D follow pixel logic so they can watch and learn from pro artists. <laughs> nice. Right, though, work just tires you out. So far, it's hard to get on the Yeah, I know, right? It's just, it's, uh, it's a shame that, you know, you want to do what you love, but often when that's in part to your job, it's just uh, kind of makes it rough to get home and just feel that same kind of energy. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, yeah, she does 3D. Are you, I'm assuming it's a she, sorry, but uh, Ruby Reich does 3D for work. Nice. Do you sculpt or do you do more like... Um, Okay, yes. Um, is that yes for sculpting or yes for uh, something else? <laughs> and let's see. I'm going to duplicate this and then undo this last one and then project. And subdivide this up. Oh, okay, no, not sculpting. Cool. All right, so like more like motion graphics probably. Or okay, yep, rendered for Cinema 4D. Totally. Yep, motion graphics, and uh, I'm assuming probably After Effects can, uh, works together with that. I work at Google. Awesome. How do you like Google? Oh, more okay. Artic uh, architectural visualization. Nice. Archviz. Sweet. 
yeah, the Google looks, the campus looks incredible. I've got to say, from everything I've seen of it, it just looks kind of mind blowing how much, uh, it's just how much is there, period, and like technology and information and you know, all the amenities. It's bananas. It's like a small country, right? I mean, like their, their, <laughs> their income is like, uh, their power. It's like it's more than the government. It's nuts. It's kind of scary, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Uh, all right, what am I doing here? Brain fart. All right, I'm going to do projection. Uh, I got some new buttons in here for 2020. I forget. Because at work, we still got 2019, and uh, I think we got to push them to upgrade. All right, let's do this like so. Isolate this out quick. And yeah, that's the one I want to work on. Man, it looks nice smooth. But it still needs some of the high frequency noise. Uh, let's see what they said. Used to work in advertising. That was rough. Yeah, advertising is interesting. Um, advertising it depends where you are, but I've I did some advertising work um, last year, earlier last year, and man, it's um, it's such a mixed bag, you know. And I've had friends who've done it for many more years than I in the past, and they were always just like, you know, there's so much money in advertising, it's crazy. I mean, it's like, oh, what's your rate? How much? Okay, boom, let's turn on the money faucet, no problem. <laughs> it's just. It rains money in advertising, but it can be so soul-sucking because there's just, you know, minimal creativity, and it's just... I mean, it depends what it is, too. I mean, if you're lucky to be, like, someone who's directing a commercial and you get to come up with the ideas, that's awesome. But if you're just, you know, like one of us, where you're just kind of, for that job, you're just kind of a tool uh, for the, you know, for the project. You're just there to follow orders, designs, concept art, and regurgitate, you know, what they want. Um, it can really be draining after a while, and it can just be like, yeah, you're making good money, but... You're just not happy. You're not creatively fulfilled. So yeah, I hear you. It can be uh, soul sucking, harsh realities. But hey, you know, I mean, still, it's. I've always said this. Like, uh, I remember last time I said this. I think it was a Noman who was giving a little talk, and uh, if the if their worst day as a 3D artist is sculpting something you're not very enthusiastic about, you really don't have much to complain about. <laughs> It's first world problems here, you know. If you're, uh, you're like, oh, I've got a scut. It's like, oh, they didn't have the iPhone in the color I wanted. Uh. It's like, I know it can. I mean, of course, it varies too on like how your who your bosses are and how they treat you and all that. But in general, I'm like, man, I have to take a step back whenever I feel a little um, pessimistic about something or just annoyed and realize like, no, wait. You know, I, I worked other jobs, man. I worked, <laughs> I worked my way up the chain in. Well, I shouldn't say the chain really of anything, but more so like just, I did waitering, I did landscaping, um, you know, when I was much younger. Um, I've definitely done my, <laughs> served my time. I've uh, paid my dues when it comes to uh, the jobs out there, man. I've, I've done a lot and uh, worked in medical for a while, for a long while. So you're, you know, cleaning up bodily fluids and et cetera. And, uh, watching people live or die so it's uh you know this kind of job in the end i have to still always take take a moment to appreciate uh, the work i get to do and um you know just where i'm at with with all this because it's it's a blessing it really is it's uh it's awesome to be able to to work in this industry and to be able to uh make a living doing this it's it's fantastic it's it's awesome uh let's see what do they say Used to work in advertising, yeah. Uh, started as a hairdresser, nice. But they're just great because you do, yeah. You learn all the time. It's so true. Um, I think that's the name of the game now more than ever. And I, I tell people this all the time. You know, it's like evolve or die. Um, it's the name of the game in the world. Uh, more than ever now, we're in a, the information age, right? So you've got to uh, you've got to be able to be uh, ready to learn, ready to adapt. And really, I think it's it's important to condition yourself. Um, to be happy to learn, you know, it's, it's something that's, that's something you have, you have to like train yourself or discipline yourself to, uh, to get to do right. Um, is to love to learn. That's important. Um, and whenever I have to learn new software, I often have to, um, carrot myself, you know, like a horse and a carrot, um, carrot myself into learning some new technology because it may not be that exciting up front. Um, like I've been learning more and more of unreal lately. Cause that's what we work with at work. And that's what I'm gonna do my short film in. And it's, uh, 
it, it can be tedious at times, I'll be honest, man. It's like some of the stuff you have to learn, it's not really that exciting. I mean, it's exciting to see the big picture, and that's what keeps you going. Is like you think long term, you think like miles down the road. You know, what is this leading to? What's this going to, you know, what's the summit going to be like? Um, so that helps you keep going. But I think if you have a particular project in mind and you have this bigger goal, you keep, you know, pushing yourself to learn the new elements of the software so that you can uh, achieve that goal. That's what really can help uh, keep you going when it gets dry and slow. Yeah. Oh man, this one's dense. Uh, yeah, five million. Jeez, what the hell? Uh, gotta. I'm gonna redo this guy too. This is way too much. Uh, duplicate. And three nash. <coughs> metal hey man what's up dude also helps to make small projects for yourself to work on totally learn rhizome uv yep rhizome uv front wrapping is awesome i've uh, downloaded it and i've learned a little bit of it i need to learn more of it because it's so useful at least until uh pixelogic gets their uh uv peel in place <coughs> excuse me <coughs> Ugh. all right this is processing shoot hopefully this uh Dang it. I hate that. When you um, when you have something working in ZBrush and then you click off of it or click somewhere else, it freezes the uh, menu up here. Or the uh, Oh, well, no, move, there's moving again. It used to freeze. Maybe I... Uh, man, maybe it's just taking that long because it's 5 million. Anyway, oh well. Um, yeah, small projects are great. My problem is I, I think too big <laughs> for a lot of things. I think, I think like, I want to be a director. That's my whole goal, really, in life. So... I want to write and direct my own films because I think uh, grand scale. So I often just think without limitations, which is probably not a good thing all the time. But I think in the long run, it's gonna it's gonna serve me. But uh, but yeah, I think I think big. I think uh, big picture. So that often means that I'm very ambitious in what I tackle, and then it, it takes a long time to get it done. But it's awesome at the end. So I don't know. It's one thing or the other, I guess. Um, so small projects are hard for me to do. Uh, Someone says they haven't uh, made the jump. Okay, uh, made the jump to live from 3D. Oh, the jump to live from 3D. Okay, gotcha. Right. Anyway, uh, really enjoy learning. Yeah, man. Oh, the Corona render. Yeah. Huh. Nice. Yeah, the uh, Corona render is pretty cool too. It's nice. I think there's a new one too by um, Intel. I think it's D5. I think it's a new one I've heard about. Um, I think it's just going to be working with their uh, processors uh, very well. Man, this turned out nice. For a Z remesh, it's awesome. And we'll do a projection quick. Get back to the whole thing. Metal Cataclysm. Can you confer an opinions about how you were? Uh, I think you might have to rephrase that, man. I'm not sure what you're asking. And then I see uh, you're saying something about your second character. Um, hmm. Maybe rephrase your question or check spelling. I'm not sure what you're asking, dude. Um, but if you want me to critique something, uh, sure. You can send me a link or something, and I'll, I'll check it out for you. Uh, all right. What are we doing here? Project all quick. No, don't need poly paint. Oh, derp. I want to subdivide. There we go. Boom. Sweet. All right. Nice. All right, so then this guy can go bye-bye because it's way too dense. Sayonara. All right. Uh, 
think I'm going to duplicate this guy and then change it up. Oh yeah, it's still with this other one. What are we doing here? There we go. Anyone out there using Unreal? Any of you guys, uh, gals, uh, you guys using that software at all for your uh, projects? What are we doing here? Mirror. Yeah, substance is also on my list. Yeah, I've been learning substance too. Finally, I've been getting into it, and it's 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 pretty easy to pick up. I gotta say, if you know if you know uh, Photoshop, you know or most Adobe software, uh, it's pretty kick ass. It's pretty awesome, really powerful too. Like like crazy powerful um, for uh, creating materials and all your maps. Mm, excuse me, and it's also uh, great for. Um, I well, maybe not great. I wouldn't say, but it's it's impressive for its uh, auto unwrapping actually too. Like I was just messing with it at work the other day, and just for fun, I brought in a uh, a mesh that didn't have UVs, and then I, I re re easy re mesh this too. Um, so I uh, just dropped the mesh in with no UVs, and just it automatically generated UVs, and they weren't too bad. I gotta say, they were actually pretty good. Um, they had good textual uh, distribution, and uh, they worked out. They worked out pretty well. Um, of course, you know. Still, it's it's more useful, to, or it's best, of course, to do UVs in like Maya or probably Rhizome. I guess I got it. I bought it, but I haven't even learned it yet. It's terrible. Um, let's see, Shadow Fang Twenty Two Unreal. That's what they taught us to use in school. So I use it pretty often. Awesome. Yeah, the newest version uh, for Ruby. Yeah, the newest version of uh, Substance is pretty kick ass. <laughs> so you have to make sure to update uh, if you haven't. But yeah, it um, will generate UVs for you and unwrap your sucker and it's unwrap your model and it's pretty it's pretty good it's pretty cool. I mean, again, it's, if, it's, if it's you're just like hit the ground running, you just need to get something done and have decent UVs. It's not bad. I'm also really curious about Mixer from Quixel because that's going to be something that looks like they'll have. Um, they said they were going to come out in the first two weeks with it of January, uh, but here we are uh, approaching week three. And uh, or we are in week three, I guess, and uh, nada. So kind of a bummer, but uh, Mixer looks incredible whenever it's gonna release, and it'll be free. And they also said they're actually adding more than what they put in the trailer, so you'll be able to uh, apparently um, do a lot of the same things you could do in Substance and more, and probably different things, of course, too, as far as um, uh, material creation and um, being able to blend photo, you know, uh, photogrammetry textures together. It's gonna be pretty nuts. So uh, be on the lookout for that, especially if you're an Unreal user. But they said actually Mixer will be um, free for use even if you're not an Unreal user. So the thing is the deal with Quixel and, and Unreal and Epic when they merged is that um, if you have an Unreal account and you're using things in, in Unreal, you can get all that stuff for free. But if you're not, then um, I guess you technically shouldn't be or can't uh, use the software. So I'm not sure how they monitor that. <laughs> But uh, maybe it's the honor system. I don't know. Because you could just create an account and then just go to town, I guess. But I don't know. Maybe they have ways of checking up on that. I'm sure they do. There are smart people over there. All right. Let's do some fun deformations. Oh, yeah. Oops. Uh, drop it down one. Yeah.
Uh, Ruby's asking when I'm done, will I print it? Yes, that is the plan. This will be a gift for Mr. Favreau and my art director from MPC, Mishi McKegg. She's also a good friend, longtime friend. Known each other for quite a while. And uh, she's who brought me on board, actually, for uh, Lion King. So she's awesome. She's great. She's also been nice enough to have me over for, like, Thanksgivings when we were all, and those of us who were orphaned here for Thanksgiving or Christmas, we were, we were able to get together for some time. So that was, that was great. Um, I'm glad that using substance textures in Unreal is very easy to do. Yeah. Fairly, yeah, yeah, it's totally fairly easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, there's a plugin uh, in Unreal for substance. So you can, uh, you can just, you know, I think, import it directly or whatever. I haven't even dabbled with that yet. I just installed it and, I'm like, I got to check it out. But yeah, there's so much to learn in substance. It's kind of crazy. It's deep. There's a lot to it. It's like Maya kind of, but in a different, whole different way. Um, Maya in the sense of like the the amount of information that it has and the amount of um, the amount of options you have to do different tasks. It's bananas. This made me just think, John Favreau and Clouds. Did you guys see that meme that someone posted recently of um, clouds that look like Baby Yoda? <laughs> or, you know, the child, not Baby Yoda. Mandalorian. It was pretty cool. I keep wondering if it's Photoshopped or not, but... It's pretty good Photoshop, I think, if they, uh, if they did do that. Because it looks just natural enough where you're like, that looks real. I think it's real. I wonder, it'd be crazy if you could ever, if there's, we will never know, but I mean, like, I wonder who the first person was to ever look up in the clouds and say, oh, I think that looks like this. And the friend was like, yeah, I think it does too. <laughs> I don't know. It was a weird thought, but it'd be funny to, uh, to have seen that for the first time. <laughs> it's like, it's such a universal thing. I mean, I, I think almost everybody has done it as a child at some point. If you're laying in the, you know, just laying in the grass looking up. Or just walking, whatever. You just look up in the sky and you see clouds. You're like, huh, that looks like blah, 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 whatever. This is such a natural um, association for the brain. It's wild how our, our minds work. <laughs> Stone Ages, yeah, of course. It was some, some early person. Caveman or Adam and Eve, whichever way you slide. Both. <laughs> Some advanced monkeys. <laughs> Some advanced apes. That looks like a banana. <laughs> oh, dang, this one's full too. Oh, oh, yeah, because it's the body. All right. Uh, what do I want to do here? Uh, I guess I'll come back to that. Because I know I want to lead like kind of this curve underneath the the paw, so it's almost like it's almost like dust kicking up. Like if the line were to come lay down and its paws came down, it kind of like poof, you know, and you have the clouds kind of billow out from underneath. Just give a real sense of grandiose power. What's that line of the Emperor? Unstoppable, unimaginable power. I can't remember. I'm not a big Star Wars nerd. I casually watch the movies and enjoy them, but I uh, still think the original three were the best. And Mandalorian. Man, the last two episodes of Mandalorian were fantastic. I won't spoil it, don't worry. But if you haven't seen it, you should definitely watch it. Just finished Mr. Robot, too. Kind of got hooked, and I just had to binge it over the last couple weeks. Just watch episodes. As soon as I got home from work, I'd make dinner and just... I'm embarrassed to say it, because I don't usually do that. I don't just sit in front of the TV for anything, but I've been so tired. I've been so sick <laughs> these last couple weeks before Christmas, and then right after I came back home, and I got sick again, because I haven't been sick in, like, two almost two years, and then I got sick from random, and then, of course, everybody was sick on the plane and in the airport at LAX and back in... 
east so east coast so it was just like ugh, should have worn a facial mask anyway so yeah so my recuperation i decided to uh binge uh mr robot uh, that's pretty good i gotta say i can see why rami malik is uh is um such a rising star um i mean i saw rhapsody um bohemian rhapsody too which was awesome um I'm curious to see what he's going to be like in the new Bond movie. As a villain. I'm hoping it'll be good, of course. Ruby has been sick since Christmas. LAX got me through. Yeah, right? I mean, LAX was just a cesspool. It was like a walking Petri dish. Uh, looks like some people are checking out and some people are coming in. Sorry if this is too boring. I know it's not. This isn't the most exciting. I know it's 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 a slow process. That's a thing. But uh, hey, I didn't claim otherwise. So sorry. Oof, Ruby ended up with strep. That sucks. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what I got, but I think I've, uh, I've got to see a doctor again, probably. Or not again, I should actually. I haven't been to one in a long time. i got to go. I'm trying to just make sure this isn't something worse. Like that um, coronavirus, right? Isn't that what it's called? It's like coming over from China. It's right here, I guess. <laughs> I feel like that's probably what we all have. And uh, it's bad. Stuff is just, just, this, ugh, just lingering. <coughs> mm, pardon me. How do you make the surface clean? I usually get all strange after a while. It's just smooth until it's straight. Uh, totally binge watch American Playboy. <laughs> um, tip uh, Tippo Tippo is asking how do I make the surface clean? Well, yeah, uh, smoothing is one way. <clears throat> Excuse me. You also want to um, probably Z remesh if you're dealing with high poly and. Uh, you know, I mean, I guess it depends what kind of sculpture you're you're doing. You know, like what kind of work you're doing. Um, so in this case, yeah, I just I just remesh to um, to get nice clean geometry. So then that helps to form and smooth, and it just helps your sculpting move forward um, in a much more efficient way, a much better way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then this is you know hold shift and to smooth. Hmm. So this feels like too lopsided right now. I'll often do this where I'll go micro macro. So I'll go in for a big overall look and then get back into the uh, details. Ah, crap. I've been thinking about these last couple streams. I've been thinking about um, playing some uh, royalty free, royalty free music for you guys, um, because uh, Pixo has an account that we can use. But again, I don't know if you guys want that because I know a lot of people want to listen to their own music and maybe listen to someone talk for whatever reason. If you want to hear me talk, because um, that's how I operate a lot, even at work. If I'm listening to a podcast, you know, whatever Joe Rogan or an audiobook, I might. Uh, want to listen to some tunes and hear someone talking at the same time, like some non-vocal music. So 
That's why I haven't really jumped on the um, the music background music for you guys. But I don't know. Is anyone like extremely bored without music? Is that something that they uh, they want? Let's see. What does people say here? Um, do you find you use Z Remesh and not Dynamesh? Uh, yeah, I do use a lot of Z Remesh more than Dynamesh typically. I don't know. It's just a habit because it keeps topology cleaner. Um, I mean, Dynamesh is a little bit faster in some ways, I guess, where you're, you know, you're working on something and then you want to redistribute. You just do this. You just, you know, hit control and then uh, drag the mask in the in the document and you you redynamesh quickly. But in this case, I want to keep some of the forms um, that I've got going on. So Dynamesh can kind of like smudge that more. I think it's gotten better actually in this new version, but um, I'm just kind of using old, a little bit old school uh, workflow in that sense. So I'm kind of avoiding Dynamesh for now. Um, but do you use Z-Remesh with a high poly count? Uh, not really. But that's why uh, a little earlier, if you, I'm not sure if you were here for that uh, typo. Uh, I um, will duplicate my high poly model and then uh, hide everything else and then uh, subdivide it. Or sorry, the high poly model, duplicate it. I will Z-Remesh the duplicate and then I will subdivide that once or twice and then project all. So then hide everything else except the two duplicates and reproject the detail from the previous one, but now it has a lot cleaner topology. And then you just move forward with that. Um, let's see what else is going on. I mean, you don't use the Z-Mesh to lower the poly count, right? I mean, yeah, I kind of do sometimes. I mean, that's another way of doing it too if you just want to if you want like low topo topology for some reason, or if you need to go back to a lower, like let's say you deleted your uh, subdivisions or your geo chain, so you can't reconstruct your subdivisions. Um, you know, duplicating your model, Z remeshing the duplicate, and then projecting the detail back from your subdivide up a couple times and reproject the detail back from your um, your original model. That'll be the way to do that. So then you have you've basically then in a kind of a roundabout way you've uh, reconstructed your subdivision levels. That's a, a fast and efficient way to do that. Um, sorry, I'm gonna cough again. <laughs> okay, don't wanna deafen you guys. Um, so Ruby says no to music, cool. All right, so I don't feel bad. <laughs> I'm listening to stuff myself, but I don't wanna like, it's copywritten, I guess, so I you know, can't play it for you guys. Uh, Zach Daniels. <laughs> Hello, you dirty vert pushers. Nice. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> How you doing, dude? Uh, Tippo. Okay, got it. Yeah, cool. You're welcome. A Valiant Eye. Okay, so Zach Daniels and Valiant Eye on Twitch. I guess you're the same person. Because you have the same verbiage. Same wording. So it's nice to turn on perspective and sort of see how it's going to look in closer to real life. So this is like 50 millimeter lens down here. I have my focal length um, assigned to the bottom there. Uh, poops, you caught me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I'll put it in perspective just to check things out, but then I'll often go back to orthogonal so that I can more accurately um, get those forms down. Uh, Tippo's got to go. All right, man. Take care. We'll see you. Uh, who else is here? We got a bunch of people. Yeah, man. You're welcome. Um, all right. No more questions for the moment. So a few months ago, I was going through some of John Favreau's, um, other work and I watched, uh, Chef and then I got sucked into his Chef show where he's like, has all these different chefs coming on and 
and cooking all kinds of man it just made me so hungry <laughs> i just started like ah i gotta make that it was uh <laughs> it was it wasn't good for my waistline probably <laughs> but man that was uh i don't normally watch cooking shows in general even though i'm well aware of all their existence but um but that was fun and the movie chef is great i gotta say it is a really underrated and fantastic movie I mean, maybe it's not that underrated. I just I just had heard about it, and I knew other people who said they heard about it but hadn't seen it. And so then I finally watched it, and I was like, dude, this is it's a really good movie. I'm going to try something different here because I just feel like, I don't know, I just wind up retreading some areas. I'm going to try some noisemaker and see what we get. Because mm, I remember I did that before, but so much of the work that I did was at the studio, so I don't have it here with me, of course. I wouldn't be allowed to. But um, <clears throat> I did a bunch of techniques and uh, didn't really document them because I was kind of like finding my way through it as I was going. Uh, so we want to go to surface noise. Oh yeah, and before you do anything in Noisemaker, oh, it's good to quick save because you never know when it might be like does not compute, <laughs> crash. Uh, let's edit. Sorry, it's been a long day and I'm like beat. Uh, I think I want to do it the other way, I guess, right? Like this. Yeah, like even that pitting right there is nice. It gives it that really high frequency puffy. Yeah, I think this is what I did before. Just don't want to go too far. You kind of want to, kind of want to blur that. Um, man, it's been a while. Let's go on the noise plugin. Don't want checkerboard. I mean, we're looking more for like, I think that's more of like the like erosion kind of. Uh, what else would be good? Uh, I forget what turbulence looks like. Let's check that out first. Hmm, that looks pretty good actually. And it's, yeah, that's yeah, pretty similar to what was going on with the noise, but yeah, it's nice. All right, I think we're gonna go with that to really kind of texture it a bit more in a more efficient way. So what are we at? A hundred thousand. All right, so I want to apply it to the whole thing. Divide up a couple times. At Three million. It's more than enough. Sweet thermals. Apply to mesh. I think it has color assigned to it, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, there we go. You can always get thrown off if you have um, noise assigned with color, because then it'll make depth look deeper and surface look higher. It just throws you off. So you got to make sure you fill it with uh, some solid color if you uh, didn't make sure to do uh, one color at the beginning. Like I forgot to do. Ah, Ruby, you left. Bye-bye. All right, so that's, that's looking okay. I mean, it could still be, you know, actually I'll go back and mask uh, my noise. Invert, and let's see if this works, because it still looks too rock-like. Looks like an eroded rock. I want to do a little bit more of like a puffy cloud. So do an inflate. See how this works. Let's go crazy for a second. Hmm, not bad. It still feels almost a little too much though. Might have to. Uh... Yeah, it does look good. I think I might need to expand that though. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do back and increase the size, the scale of the noise. Go to edit. Plug in scale. Oh, that's the other thing. Uh, that's the other direction. Uh, where are we going here? Noise scale. 
Oh wait, no. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Basic mix. Do I need to mix it? Uh, maybe I have to go back in here, I guess. And, oh. Wait, do we have the? Uh, is that menu open? No. Edit. Duh. There we go. Um, all right. I forget if this live connects or not. I don't. Yeah, it does. Okay, cool. Let's scale it up. What are we looking at here? What happens if I do something crazy like 30? Hmm. Detail gain, octaves. What about octaves? You know, pros will lead you to think that they know it all, but a lot of times there's areas that you just don't touch for a while, and so you have to like experiment just to get back to a certain knowledge base of different terrain in, in any program. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to get back to good work and feel with uh, Noisemaker because I haven't done this in a while. What was the other one? Ero no, so we're in turbulence. That's right. Erosion is the other one. Eesh. It's too much. Hmm. Oh, we were saying by the tip. Okay, cool. Glad I still have you. Whoa. Frame. There we go. Alright. I'm all turned around. Alright. Let's figure out this scale thing. Plug in scale, it's like strength. It doesn't look like it's, yeah. Noise scale. So, what am I missing here? What am I missing? Magnify by mask. scale this thing up again. Magnitude. Sometimes I wish these things had sliders instead of these little buttons you have to tap. It'd be better if I could just not go like that and scale up or down. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Alright, scale. Damn, that just looks like it's Oh wait, maybe, do I still have the mask on? So wait, okay, maybe that's what's throwing me off. There we go, yeah, all right. Didn't go back far enough. Derp. All right, whole thing. All right, there we go, sorry about that. There we go, okay, let's do this. Not checkerboard, let's go back to turbulence. Scale, there we go, all right. I thought so. Uh, let's bring this sucker up. Let's do like five. There. No, not 54. Jeez. Five. And this also, okay. Yeah, man. It's been a while. Sweet. <laughs> then I'll smooth this out and do some inflate. <laughs> Kind of a delicate dance in this area. It's you don't want to go to one extreme or the other.
mask my noise. Do an inflate. Yeah, other way. Oops. Invert. Uh, yeah, maybe. Ugh, that looks kind of gross too. <laughs> kind of looks like a tumor or something. Eek. I don't know. Eh, this could work. I don't know. Any thoughts? Another nice thing I like to do is uh, the clay brush, man. The clay brush is just, it's great for this kind of stuff too, creating some kind of, kind of chunkiness. Yep, here and there. I kind of want to make sure nothing, like when you're looking from the sideline, that nothing's overtaking Mufasa, so I got to kind of, Got to kind of push this stuff back. Hmm. Oh, derp. Got any questions, anybody? It's been kind of quiet in the chat lately.
sorry if the uh, viewport gets weird where I'm like, I notice myself when I'm just focusing on something and I'll be working at an angle where it's like everything's hidden except what I'm working on. It's just, I don't know if that happens with other, other ZBrush users, but for me, <coughs> it happens a lot where I'm just, I'm just like moving and I don't even think about it. And then I have to remind myself that here, this is uh, meant to be at least somewhat entertaining and not depriving you of like this where you're just... <laughs> You don't see anything, so sorry if that's uh, annoying anybody. It's uh, unintentional. It's just a uh, force of habit when your eyes are in one area. It just happens. Keep wondering too if I should make him bigger or the you know, the clouds smaller in some ways. It's like you want it to be grandiose and kind of lead the eye to the center of him, you know. But I don't know. It's interesting. You don't want the clouds to be too small then, because then it just doesn't have that arc. It doesn't have that same feel. I don't know. I'm still kind of debating. I'm, I'm liking where it's going, but I'm still kind of. I'm second guessing certain choices, which I need to stop doing because it's what's making this piece take for freaking ever. But I also hate rushing the things I want to do a good job on, so it's catch 22. Alright, so like this area's kind of collapsed on this little flat surface here, so I think I might just inflate those and then dynamesh these guys together. That's one of the great advantages of DynaMesh, for anyone wondering. Um, once you have pieces of the mesh intersect each other, like right here I just inflated these areas to look tight. And uh, so if I hide that, and so you can see inside, you see how it's a mess in here, but all these areas are intersecting. So what DynaMesh does is it kind of, it does like a shrink wrap, or like almost like a laser scan. It kind of looks at the outer surface of this whole thing. It looks on the outside normals, and as long as it's like a watertight mesh, even if it's not, it'll it'll figure it out and say, all right, well, this majority of the normals are facing out this way, so the interior must be here. It'll close the holes and uh, and then make it like one continuous mesh. So in this case, it's going to re remesh this and uh, make it uh, a new mesh with uh, all those intersecting pieces <clears throat> uh, manifold. So that's what we're going to do. So I want to make sure it's high enough, though, because I don't want to lose some of this fun detail in here. So, let's see what happens. Cause that's a nice, it's a nice distribution. Uh, but that's the thing zebra mesh will not do is it won't, um, it won't create any kind of boolean options. It'll just uh, remesh what's there already. So if you have intersecting geo, it won't connect them. It won't weld them together. It'll just leave them like intersecting, and I just drop something. Sorry, one sec. I don't want my dog to get uh, a piece of toast. <laughs> All right. Uh, my guy, sculpt is looking great. Thanks, uh, P0 Pro X2 on Twitch. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. <laughs> I'm assuming it's a dude. I could be wrong. I don't know. I don't have a lot of girls address me as my dude, my man, my guy. <laughs> typically do to uh, address me like that. I could be wrong. I don't know. Okay. So now we're going to dynamesh this bad guy. Alright. Also want to always make sure your uh, grid is not too tiny because if your grid is really tiny that means this is huge and then that correlates to dynamesh and that'll kill your computer. It'll just be like processing for an eternity. 
depending on your setup, of course. All right, this feels good. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Four million. Well, we definitely can retain the detail, that's for sure. Yeah, but at the cost of insanely high geometry for this piece. But yeah, took care of this. All well, that's continuous now, so if you remember this area that I showed you before, smooth it out, and it's all continuous now. Like that, instead of all the weird little cluster crap that was in there before. So, now I just want to probably Z-Remesh this guy, duplicate and Z-Remesh, because it's way too high for what I want to do with it now. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> All right. Oh, the baseball player. Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haha, <laughs> nice. What's up? Are you, uh, are things looking good for you up in, uh, I think you were talking about going to New York, right? For, uh, NPC there? Got to keep on brand. <laughs> I was grabbing a mug for uh, <clears throat> for this session, and I was looking through my cabinet of them, and I was like, "This is the right mug to choose." <laughs> and Jonathan says, "Yeah." She said she let me know within a couple weeks. An interview at three four three Industries tomorrow, dude. Rock on, yeah. Three four three might be doing some. Uh, Oh, it's still processing. You might be doing some um, Halo or uh, Destiny work, I guess. I haven't played a Halo or a Destiny game. I haven't ever played a Destiny game, actually. It doesn't really appeal to me. Um, but I haven't played a Halo game in forever either. But I kind of miss like the good old days of Halo 1 and 2. When you play with your buddies on a split screen and you just, just go at it. That was fun. I'm such an old person now, though, right? Like, people are like, what? N64? Xbox, but man, it's still like Mario Kart 64. <laughs> I was talking with guys at work about Star Fox. I'm like, dude, that'd be so much fun to work on a show like based on Star Fox. Uh, it was, uh, it's, it's, it's so much in our studio's um, wheelhouse. Like cute anthropomorphized animals, badass hard surface detail on the ships, fun adventure. Man, that'd be fun. Be a hell of a lot of fun. I wish I could direct something like that. That would be like a write and direct something like that. that would be a freaking dream come true. This would be a fun, fun film to work on. Okay, looking for a lighting position. Cool, man. Yeah, you love Halo. Yeah, yeah, dude. Halo's fun. Especially those like first two, three good times. The Halo trailers, I gotta say too, they always promise more than the cinematic trailers that I guess Blur or whoever did. They're so badass. They're so great. But they, uh, often over-promised what the game would be like. They looked phenomenal, and then the game was like, eh, it's not nearly as cool. I hope they get that tone right eventually. I mean, I know they're so mega... I mean, Halo was like the most successful piece of property in the world, in the universe for a while. So I know they don't need to improve, really, uh, necessarily, but I feel like, man, it would be cool if they would just, just get a little bit more mature. I always felt like Halo it just... It was fun, but it also, um... I don't know, Aliens and colors and everything felt a little not that color is bad i love color um but i don't know 
it definitely felt like it, it scratched the itch for younger people when I was when I was that age, you know. But as I got older, I wanted something a bit more, like the trailers showed, basically just a bit more mature, just a, a bit more intense, um, and serious, uh, and kind of. I mean, it's warfare, right? So it's a little bit more brutal. Nothing crazy, gory, or graphic, but just uh, just a little bit more aggressive, I guess. It's testosterone in me. Einstein. Stop. I have a corgi. He's, uh, sometimes he gets a little too, uh, licky. <laughs> and I hear him over there cleaning his paws or whatever. I'm like, dude, stop it. It's 3 a.m. I'm trying to sleep. All right. Alright, all right, we're getting we're getting here. If they even had an HBO version or something like that of Halo. Yeah, I know, man. That's the thing though, it's almost like Master Chief and Halo is that's a great idea though, man. I would watch the hell out of a HBO version of Halo where it's like Westworld, that level. <laughs> That'd be awesome. See, that's, I think, what a lot of us want, because a lot of us grew up, we were the age that was the prime demographic when they came out, which was more like college age, teen, college, you know. Of course, kids got into it, but I think their biggest target was, uh, you know, um, maybe that was the age range was like teen to uh, adult, of course. But um, anyway, I just think, yeah, if they made a, you're right, if they made like a HBO version of that, wow. That would be awesome. They should just, I mean, like Neil Blomkamp was like looking to do that for a while, and I don't know why... He wasn't trusted to do it, or why it fell apart, because I'm sure he would have been... He would have freaking killed it. He would have made it awesome. <coughs> I mean, proof is... All the other work he's done. I mean, my favorite film of his is uh, District 9. It's so fantastic. I really wish that he would go back to that universe. Um, man, District 9 is one of my favorite sci-fi films. He just... Man, what he delivered with the... Um, the epit for me, the epitome, the whole thing is great. I mean, amazing everything, visual effects and great story, but uh, great body horror, too, for those of you who like The Fly or The Thing. Definitely watch District 9 if you haven't. Uh, but it's like aliens wrapped in with with The Fly and The Thing. And Anyway, uh, the um, the biomech suit, man, That when he gets in that... Oh, God, that's so cool. It was, uh, I think, uh, was it Greg Broadmoor? I think he's the one who designed it. Badass design, man. Greg is a beast. Such a cool design. I think if Neil Blomkamp and, uh, I don't know. This is just spitballing. This is like just mental creative vomit. But like if he and like J.J. Abrams worked together to do, um, like if Bad Robot, I guess like funded or whatever. I don't know. He probably doesn't need funding at all. But I mean, I, it's just if they would collaborate on a Half Life movie, like. Because thinking of that biomech in uh, District 9 made me think of Dog in uh, Half-Life. If you guys are familiar with that uh, game franchise, there's this awesome robot. that uh, It's called Dog, but it because it, it acts like a dog, sort of, but it's more in the shape of like a giant gorilla. And uh, it's kind of like piecemeal together from all these different um, pieces of technology from the, uh, from the world and from the enemy um, combatants in the story. And it's just a phenomenal, it's also really just a great design. It's a great base design, I would say now, because we've moved so far into detail with 3D models. I'm really tempted to to uh, do a 3D printed dog, but like do it way more detailed and um, kind of give it, uh, you know, a push into a more aggressive design too. But anyway, man, if they were, if they were to, if Neil Blomkamp did like a Half-Life movie or uh you know, or aliens too. That was the other thing he was looking to do. And like all these near near hits with with Neil Blomkamp. It's such a shame because I think he would just he would just clean house. He would just show people this is how it's done. I think he'd do a great job. I think it's like every sci-fi nerd's dream is to work on a film or you know be a part of the story team to develop a badass aliens or uh, Half Life or uh, you know. Or even like a good Predator movie, man. Those last couple Predator movies were just terrible. Ugh. Especially the last one was just god awful. But uh, it's a shame because the original, original two were fun. Especially the first one. 
the aliens for me i know a lot of people divided on the uh, covenant but man covenant was great too i really liked the uh, covenant as compared to prometheus and uh only mostly it wasn't because of the aliens though it was because of uh walter and david are just fascinating to see two ai uh synthetic people going at it that was that was pretty awesome i would just watch a whole movie just with them <laughs> it's just about them going at it you know different planets whatever just create some cool story around them it's just so fascinating and because they made them intellectuals you know like not just there's a difference between just being intelligent and robotic versus having a mind and an intellect and then having that level of sophistication and refinement and that culture that they showed in the beginning where guy pierce is talking with david and then they have the statue of david you know michelangelo's work and uh you know then the uh was it the flight of the valkyries and he's like it's a bit anemic without the uh orchestra this guy pierce it's great writing i was just like man there's some really i know people are divided on that film but man it's there's so many good parts of that film i really enjoyed it overall not perfect i know but definitely entertaining anyway i'm just babbling uh just checked and they have a tv series called halo premiering in 2021 nine episodes on showtime wow <laughs> that's cool uh showtime's a good place to do it i just wonder who's producing and directing and writing uh is it neil or is it someone else i mean hey if like someone like jonathan or jonah nolan if he did it man or chris nolan whew, would be awesome i'm a big fan of the nolans they uh they're the to me they're some of the best filmmakers and writers uh working today for sure i really really dig their their take on their adaptations and their take on um the films they worked on interstellar is one of my top three favorite films ever I just love it tars was awesome again like these are characters i love it when people do that because that's how i think too where you make each character so fascinating and interesting and you probably in character meaning it's not even a human in that case but you can make them interesting enough where you could almost watch a whole film revolving just around them but yet they're still just a fragment of this bigger picture and you don't need to see a whole film to get them and to get how fascinating or badass or you know intricate they are but then they come together to form this really complex puzzle that creates a beautiful tapestry a beautiful final image and for me i thought that that's um you know I just wanted more of Interstellar in the end. Not that I think a sequel should be made, because uh, I think it's, I, I prefer a lot of times that films to stand alone. I think like The Matrix, like, you know, I think they should have just left the first one alone. But definitely curious about the next one, just because I love Keanu. And uh, I think it's, it's just too bad the Wachowskis uh, just haven't had a lot of hits since then, but I don't know. I'll be cautiously optimistic for Matrix 4. All right, we're getting there. I know this is slow. I'm sorry if anyone's been, like, checking out because they're like, oh, God, this is like watching paint dry. Sorry. <laughs> but this is coming together. It's starting to... starting to flow. I'm going to try to make this... Maybe a little bit more even, probably bring this around a little bit more, or add some more so this kind of feels a little bit more symmetrical. Not too symmetrical, but enough. And then uh, I'm going to have a really cool base below this that I'm going to do. That'll be the last thing I do, probably. But, excuse me, it'll have like the title, Lion King. And uh, I'm still debating too, like how, how I'll do. I want to perhaps do some LEDs in this. Like, um, not like I did for. Um, uh, for my Trico statue in The Last Guardian, but um, something similar. <coughs> Sorry. Probably want to do something uh, in the eyes to really have like that, that when that awesome shot in Lion King, the original, when he's talking to Simba and his eyes are glowing, you know, like the uh, owl in uh, in uh, Secret of Nim. Uh, just to feel that godlike power. It's like, it's literally like god mode, if you know Doom. <laughs> it's just, just bright golden eyes. Um, but I want to also probably print this in... Um, in uh, Form Labs white, so it's like a bone white kind of, so it has a little bit of off white kind of tone to it, but it's really pleasant. It's really nice um, quality to it. So this will have the cloud kind of look, and then I want to put a really powerful, maybe a couple um, kind of uh, warm uh, LEDs, white LEDs inside, 
so it really looks like a star is sort of like a sun is, is illuminating the clouds from within. Uh, and then that'll also mean that I'll have to really focus on thickness of, uh, of the walls in here so that the areas that should be thicker are, and then the areas that are, um, I might even put LEDs right behind some very thin little walls here for the eyes, um, so that they really punch out when you see them. Uh, but then it's, they're brighter than the rest of it, but the rest of it's still illuminated too from a central point of like where his heart is, you know, that emanates outward from here. And then in these clouds, I would actually like to do, um, I'm going to try to figure out how to uh, do some light piping uh, and have them inside these clouds on both ends and, and trickle down into the bottom here. And uh, I want to figure out how to do, because um, I, I figured out how to do for my Trico statue, a uh, flame, a flame, a little tiny little flame LED that flickers for a, for a, like a cauldron, like a, a big torch attached to the, to the base. Um, so it's a little fire flickering. Uh, but I want to be able to do that for lightning. So I want to do like light piping in here and then you'd have um, randomly kind of like, like a thunderstorm kind of going off. So you could turn it on or off or like maybe like a, a three-step switch. So you'd have one that would just have that nice glow, maybe like a nice warm pulsating, just gentle kind of, you know, kind of almost like a heartbeat kind of or like a breathing kind of just this nice pulsating uh, light from within. And then maybe another switch then would have that on, but then also have the... Um, the fury of the lightning in these clouds kind of going off, you know, so it'd have to be really bright LEDs and uh, really good uh, uh, light pipes in some way. It might actually have to be um, not really cylinders, but more of like a flat, um, a flat, very jagged uh, piece of plastic. I think I have some right around here somewhere. Uh, probably won't find it right now, but I have some around here. Anyway, I bought that a while ago to research for um, lighting I was doing for uh, Trico. And, um, anyway, so that's the general idea. It's like the long, long-term vision for this thing is, um, take what I know and kind of repurposing it in different ways and, and plussing it a little bit. Uh, but I think that'll be pretty, that'd be pretty badass. And then of course, if you just don't want to do that, you can just keep the switch off and you just have this, you know, hopefully epic, beautiful statue in white. And, uh, then you flip the switch or use a little remote, you know, and you can, uh, turn on the, uh, light show. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Question was, this is Jonathan, what's he saying? Auto burst. Okay. Jonathan, Lesman, Leib Leibsman, directors. Okay, I don't know those names. I wonder what they've done. Hmm. What's the IMDb it? <laughs> Where are we at time-wise? 9.25, all right, about a half hour to go. This is kind of therapeutic though, I gotta say. Get in the zone. I'm gonna see about maybe doing one of these, one of these live uh, sessions at an earlier time, some other day in the, the week, or I mean like in the future maybe. February or March or something, see if I can wiggle into a, a weekend daytime spot or uh, maybe even like a, a work day where I can just work from home or take a day off and just do this. Because I often find after the two hour mark, I kind of get in, or close to the two hour mark, I really get in the zone and I'm feeling that groove where you're feeling the right amount of endorphin release, I guess. You're feeling that, that zone, if you know what I mean, or you're getting in there and you're in the flow and you're just like, man, this is, this is good. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm liking where it's going. <coughs> but then it's getting late and I'm sick. So I got to get my sleep. And so that means I got to cut the fun short, which is a bummer. Anyone seen any good movies lately over the holidays? I forget if I talked about this. I don't think I did. Maybe I did. I saw the new Jumanji movie, and it's funny because, like, my, uh, I would call him my adopted uncle. Good friend of our families who, uh, who I love like an uncle, really. Uh, he's like our family member. Um, 
probably closer. I wouldn't say closer to him. Yeah. No, yeah, I would. <laughs> probably closer to him than to my, my actual uncles. Um, just share a lot of common commonalities. But uh, anyway, he he saw the new Jumanji movie. And uh, he just told me out of the blue. Because we always wind up talking with you, text each other about movies we've seen. And sort of just, you know, dissect them. Because he knows I'm working on my my career toward making films. And he knows how much I love them. And and I'm picky about them. And uh, anyway, so he told me he watched the new Jumanji. And uh, un- unknown to him that I had seen it too uh, during the holiday. And we both agreed. We were both shocked at kind of how... Um, I wouldn't say shocked. I wasn't shocked. He was shocked, I guess, or more impressed. But um, I knew going in that it would probably be decent because the first one was very surprisingly great, in my opinion. It was just really fun, funny, ridiculous. <laughs> good time. It was just a really fun, good time with the movies. Just like the new Bad Boys, by the way. I just saw the uh, new Bad Boys movie. And I wouldn't say it's better than the second one because the second one's pretty freaking fantastic. But it definitely is close, I would say. And it's a great, it's a great fun time with the movies. So I highly recommend Bad Boys for Life if you haven't seen it. And you know the first two, or have you at least seen the second one? Go see this one. I would even say watch the second one if you haven't, and then go see this one because it's it's just fun. It's just a freaking badass good time. Anyway, uh, so he saw my my uh, adopted uncle Brad. He saw uh, the second Jumanji movie, Next Level, and was commenting on just how not just how great it was as as a comedy and an adventure, but how touching it was actually, and how poignant. Um, I mean, we both basically said the same thing. It's it's, it's really it has some poignant commentary on aging, uh, the difficulties of aging, uh, on friendship, companionship, forgiveness, family, and uh, I, I was just kind of like you're you're kind of sucker punched by it because you don't really see it coming. You're just like, ah, oh, this is a fun, ridiculous, you know, romp of an adventure, and then it kind of does a one-two punch on you with some emotion, and you're like, wow, I didn't, I didn't see that coming, and you kind of walk away a little touched. I was like, dude, that's, I miss that. Like, I, I love feeling something at the movies now, now and then, and really just enjoying a film, just having a good time. Like, my, my coworkers went with me to see uh, uh, Bad Boys for Life, and we weren't, weren't really moved by it, but, I mean, we were just enjoying it. We were laughing hard multiple times, like, consistently through the movie. The crowd was, we were pretty, pretty everyone was laughing at the right points, you know. They, the jokes landed, most of them, if not all of them, and, uh, yeah, so it's just... It's sad that we're saying that a lot of us are saying this, but it's like it's refreshing though that we're finally getting back to a point where certain films are really hitting those notes that we haven't seen in a while. Where you just you go to the movies, you enjoy a film, and you just have a great time, and maybe even you feel something along the way, and you're not being preached at, you're not having any kind of overarching, you know, overly political messages being thrown at you either way. It's just it's just a fun, good time where everyone can kind of like get together and just have fun. So anyway, I just think that's great. Uh, let's see on YouTube first last. Do you have any tips for reflective coatings? Like how you said you are light piping. Um, and do you have any fiber or anything like that? Yeah. So, uh, good question. Um, I can't say that I have one go to because I, I was, that was all new territory for me too. I'm just I'm not afraid to to experiment with uh, with different different techniques. Um. I'll have to get back to you on it. I, I I can't say that I recommend any one particular brand. Um, but I guess it also depends what your end um, goal is. So if you want to create um, a light effect, um, I mean, so it's like you have a couple options, right? You have LEDs, you have light pipes that can draw the light from the LED outward, and certain like fiber optics will just carry it to the end of the fiber optic. So you along the path, the whole length of the fiber optic, you won't see. Um, you won't see any light emitting from it. While other lights that are have a like the one I'll talk about that are more rectangular and flat, I think those you will see light coming at the out of them from a certain angle. Um, and then there's there's several different types. I think you can find some that are cylindrical that do show light through the through the length of them too. <coughs> it also might be, and that's something else I have to think about. It also like the uh, matrix code you see here on that poster. It might be um, for Mike's usage. It might be actually better to take some um, basic coding for uh, or programming for LEDs and figure out how to go along a trail but then faster and like randomly so that you have that lightning effect it might be better than diffusing that through a, a layer of um, you know thicker plastic or a cloudier frosted kind of plastic so it diffuses it and it has that more continuous kind of look like lightning would um, 
but otherwise yeah i think that's the only thing i would recommend uh otherwise light piping it really depends on what you want to what you want to do what your end result is <laughs> thanks <coughs> excuse me but yeah man don't be afraid to experiment you know light piping plastic plastic uh filament basically is what you're buying it's it's pretty cheap you know i mean you can get like a whole roll of it on amazon for a couple bucks it's nothing so uh you know i would say just buy a couple strands of whatever different types you think might work for you and then um just go to town mess around with it cut it up glue it together uh stick in the leds and see what happens These are looking too samey. Got to kind of chop these up a bit. <coughs> Sorry. It's just that this all gets worse at night um, throat-wise. So talking at night actually makes it <laughs> harder. Mr. Hanks. <laughs> What's up, Dan the Man? Looks like some cool work. Thanks, man. Yeah, just trying to get these clouds sorted. I really like these over here. I think they worked out well, but these are, I duplicated and mirrored over, and now they're, uh, I don't know. Okay, I gotta mess with them a little bit. I forget if I left this in Dynamesh or not. No. Alright, I have to. I have to touch this guy up a little bit. <coughs> Alright, I was wondering about that. Kyle. <laughs> What's up, dude? How you doing, man? It's been too long. Need to uh, need to catch up. Need to go grab some lunch or something. <laughs> What's up, buddy? Lay down, relax. Sorry, my dog's like, I'm bored. Let's play. <laughs> yo, yo. Good to hear from you, Kyle. Glad you're still alive. <laughs> uh, 3D of Tom is asking, is this for printing? Yes, this will be for printing. This will be printed on my new uh, Form 3. Excuse me. It's all good, dude. Or Judette. Hey, 
hate it when this happens with like these little points that sometimes stick out from a mesh like this like they'll do that and then it's either sometimes it's just easier just to delete them they like don't smooth out properly for some reason they just want to stick out there so you just uh yeah so you often just have to chop them off like this and then delete hidden and uh Let's see, I'll save before I do this because this is a big mesh, but close holes, boom. And now that plays nice. Yeah, this area is messy too. I might just chop some of this out and close holes too and then re the mesh. Sorry, this is like nitty gritty work. I know it's not really uh, <laughs> highly entertaining, but this is the workflow. Especially for a perfectionist like me where it's like, just go in crazy, detailed, deep. Just make sure everything's as good as it can be. It's obviously not what I would do in production, but uh, unless it was needed. But um, in this case, when it comes to 3D printing, things just get kind of messy. And you just gotta clean it up as you go. Let's see how this goes. Like that, and then dynamesh this together. <coughs> oh, didn't mute it. Sorry, <laughs> thought I muted it. Um, let's see, 3D of Tom, good to see you on here. We met a couple years ago at Hasbro a presentation at CTN. Oh, wow, man, that was a while ago. Okay, had my Raptor sculpt with me. Yeah, <laughs> that was like my thing known for carrying around a raptor with me almost all the time to the point where people joke and sarcastically ask me where's your raptor man <laughs> and uh yeah i stopped uh stopped carrying them <laughs> only because it's uh i don't know i feel like a lot of people have seen me already with it and i'm like dude i've done other stuff but now my trico statue is so intricate and so like crazy to carry around it's, i'm done with that too for now i just got to move on to i don't know Something else fun. I have to get a table eventually at one of these conventions, I guess. I don't know. I'm also just... It's such it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's some money, and I'm just like, mm. I don't know. I don't know if I should. I'm not sure it will be much of a benefit, but maybe. Oh, cool. That's nice. All right. We're in there deep. Sorry. Okay. I'll do the smart thing. Duplicate this guy. Hide him and then dynamesh this. Actually, I'll dynamesh the duplicate just in case. That way we have history on the other one. All right. Project. This is going to be big because of the uh, size of the floor here, and it's pretty big on that, so... Oh, I should actually touch up some other things here before I do that. If I'm going to redyne mesh, I want to uh, probably thicken some of these strands. Because I know these will just crash, and they'll just like crumple on themselves and be little holes if, if I don't inflate them a bit. <laughs> Tom had a little toothy creature. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Was it like a horror kind of thing or, uh, or what? <laughs> wow, dude, Kyle, you're still at work, dude. Yeah, don't worry about it, man. You're not harassing me. <laughs> Friend of mine uh, uh, who works over at uh, Northrop is uh, still working, and it's. What time is it now? It's 9.42 p.m. on the West Coast. Dude, Kyle. I'm sorry, man. I hope... I hope it's worth it. <laughs> the man is a hard worker. Making the satellites. 
the chips and the chip gates or whatever. I don't know. I don't know all he does. He does complex NASA stuff. All right, Tom, send me an Instagram link. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah, I remember these little guys. I'm sorry, I don't remember your face, Tom. My apologies. I do remember that character, though. Okay, yeah, now let's see your profile picture. Totally. Dude, that Batman. Sweet. Nice, man. Fun work. Haha, <laughs> so you got the uh, Samsung 970 Evo Plus, nice. The uh, NVMe M2, those are, I have some of those drives too, they're awesome. They're so fast. And they already have another version already out, and it's even like freaking like twice as fast or something. And I, It's always that thing with building a PC, you buy all the latest gear, and then like two weeks later, they're like, we've doubled the speed. And you're like, shit, why did I buy this? <laughs> anyway, you got to jump in at some point and then just work with it. Yeah, man, cool work. I love the, uh, uh, oh, what's the character's name from uh, Deus Ex, Human Revolution, and Mankind Divided. What was his name? Oh, yeah, Jensen. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, those Deus Ex games were freaking awesome. These last two, they should make a movie out of that, too. I mean, that would be awesome. If they followed the game like they should, and they never do in any adaptation. Adam Jensen, right? That was his name. Adam Jensen, yeah. And they did this whole, like, kind of beautiful echoing of um, Icarus, the uh, Greek story, Greek mythological story of Icarus. He'd have those dreams. Flying too close to the sun, burning up. Those are some really great games. Really good art direction. Really great design. To the hidden, close holes. Three D Tom loves the Matrix wall art back. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm a huge Matrix fan. Would love to work on the next one, but doubt I will get that opportunity. I got to meet uh, what's his name? It's on the tip of my brain. Uh, the artist who did all the uh, insanely detailed design for the for the. Um, Nebuchadnezzar and uh, for the uh, Sentinels. Oh, what's his name? He's a badass artist. I met him at Comic Con uh, like three years ago or two years ago, and uh, such a nice guy, so humble and just so sickly talented. Got a picture with him. Should find that picture and post it. He's like he's another he's another one of those guys that I, I put him in like you know, there's like Greg Broadmoor and uh, I don't know there's just these they've got this just style and this great design and aesthetic it's just so appealing and just just righteous. First movie was kind of life-changing. Totally, dude. It's freaking awesome. First movie is just, again, one of my top three favorites. Jurassic Park, The Matrix, Interstellar. Of course, there's more. I mean, uh, Love Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, Last Crusade, in particular, but all of them are fun. Um, Aliens, Terminator 2. I like The Island a lot, actually. I know some people hate, hate Michael Bay's work, but man, The Island, well, that was a really fun movie. I really enjoyed that. 
The teaser trailer for that movie was great. They should never have made any other trailers. That's another thing, man. We gotta like, we gotta have a callback to the teaser trailer that shows no, almost nothing of the movie or like one element, and then leave it, leave you hanging, just leave you wondering. Have a good narrator or some great music or both. And like people, the freaking executives, they need to lay off like showing everybody, telling people to show them everything. Like I hate seeing a trailer and knowing what the whole movie is and how it's gonna end. I mean, granted too that maybe a lot of the movies that do that don't have amazing twists anyway, but. As we're coming back, it seems like we're getting more movies that we really uh, are just a fun time at the cinema again. We need to have trailers that are that are uh, doing their part too, that are not showing the whole freaking movie and leave you with a lot hidden, so that when you go see it, you have a holy shit moment, and you walk out of the theater beaming because you did not see X, Y, or Z coming. That's sort of part of the. I mean, that is an art. I think that's also like part of the craft of of all filmmaking and marketing it has to be there has to be some mystery you know i feel like it's i feel like hollywood executives are just kind of really looking at the lowest common denominator of the human condition meaning people who just won't go to a movie unless they know exactly what it's about which is idiotic um you want to tease people and then you want them to come in and then be blown away and then by word of mouth i mean if you just show the whole thing in the trailer it just kind of it just pisses anyone off you know so sick of that anyway sorry be negative uh, first and last said, uh, Zubish changed my entire process with photogrammetry. These work club videos are how everyone should be learning. Totally. Uh, three of Tom, Lord of the Rings. The island is pretty cool. Yeah, Lord of the Rings are great too. I love those, those films. Especially the, uh, f- again, I'm, I'm a big first and last kind of guy. I went over like number one and number three for a lot of movies. Um, Back to the Future, I still prefer the first out of all of them. Um, Aliens, uh, first and second. Actually, I actually really like the second the most. I know that people are always half and half on that. And uh, Matrix, first one only, really. Um, John Wick, all of them. Uh, what else? Indiana Jones, first and third. Temple of Doom's okay, but it's, yeah, as I've said before, I'm a bigger fan of the first and third, especially the third. Love that father son dynamic. I don't know how they're going to do another Indiana Jones and have it be awesome because poor Harrison Ford is just getting up there, man. But he did come back. I mean, he really, for what he had, he, he delivered as uh, Han, I got to say. I, love, I always love him as Han. He did a good job. It's just a shame that, uh, it's a shame he came back with certain conditions. <laughs> I feel like Han would have gone out in a different way, but whatever. I'm not the... Uh, I'm not part of the fanaticism that is uh, crazy devoted Star Wars fans. More casual. Although I'm pretty devoted to Mandalorian, I gotta say. Baby Yoda. this dude and the quick save what is Tom saying <laughs> yeah only the first matrix disappointed with the second and third <laughs> you wrote your own ending fixed everything in your mind <laughs> nice I've said this before in other streams but uh, if you love the matrix and you hate the second two or really just were disappointed if you haven't seen this uh, video by uh, the channel looper on YouTube they have a I can't remember what the title of the video was specifically but they kind of it's probably something as basic as like the Matrix 2 and 3 explained or whatever or finally explained or whatever but they actually did a really good job of um, articulating legitimately all the points that the Wachowskis were I guess trying to communicate in the second and third and it made me respect those perspectives a lot more so if that's accurate which it seemed to be uh, it's a shame that they just weren't able to you know communicate their vision uh, as they really as it was intended because uh if they had, and they had, I mean, it really seems like they almost needed to make, like, six movies in a row, you know, to really flesh out each one. Because even, like, the second one, I felt like when they brought in the Merovingian, and that was just, like, bam, 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 bam. They just layered a bunch of stuff really quick on top of themselves. And, uh, I don't know. 
I feel like if they just put as much TLC into the second one and maybe cut it into two movies, uh, they might have had an even better uh, uh, progression in the story and have people kind of get into the world a little bit more. just felt like they introduced a lot of um, uh, world-building elements that were just not fully communicated or well understood by the audience, and so it kind of left you... Um, unstable, no, you know, not sure footing. Anyway, look up that video by uh, Looper. It really uh, kind of clears things up. <coughs> Sorry. Tom. They had years and years to write the first one. The other two were rushed, I think. Yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I've heard them say that they had the whole outline for those before, but I've also heard this, uh, It's a, I think it's a pretty well-documented um uh, occurrence that the original Matrix was the base of it was written by a woman and she conceived the real skeleton of it and then they layered things on top and, and switched things around but apparently she was the one who if I'm not mistaken because she even had to I think there was a lawsuit involved and they got sued and they had to pay her a bunch of money and also probably like part of it was like a gag order or something but if you google it there's a there's a bit of information out there about someone else who really constructed the first film and that would make a lot of sense at least the spine of it, because it's such a different, it stands out as such a great achievement compared to pretty much everything else they've done. So I don't know. I don't know how, how much is, uh, how much credence there is to all of that, but it would actually explain a lot. Um, but who knows? Like, I know, um, did they direct and write V for Vendetta, or are they just producing it? I forget how that went. I thought, like, again, V for Dead, it was just okay. I like Hugo Weaving a lot, but um, if you want that kind of story, I'd actually say watch uh, Mr. Robot. <laughs> it's got a uh, a faux Guy Fox mask, kind of anti-establishment, screw the man kind of train of thought through it. And Ray Malik crushes it. Pardon me. Uh, what are we looking at here? We're almost out of time. Sorry. Uh, yep. So once again, I'm going to do what I can to work on this off of the stream so that we see some major progression here. And uh, maybe I will even do something different for the next stream because I know people have been seeing this for the last three streams of mine. And... And while there's progress, I'm sure it looks like minimalistic <laughs> for a lot of people. But it's getting there. Maybe I'll do something different for the next stream and then jump back on this when it's progressed a bit more. But I am happy with uh, the way it's turning out. We're getting there. Baby steps.
get back to this. Dynamish this guy. <laughs> I actually like where this is gone enough where I'm going to delete the other one and duplicate this guy. Yeah. You can see the change there as I switch between them. Subtle things, but enough where I'm like, yeah, don't need this other one. But insurance, just in case. Alright. And... Whoa, six million. Jeez, I'm gonna go less, not more. <laughs> or at least keep it the same. All right, bring this down. It's two, three hundred. Four million. God damn it. <laughs> uh, let's do one hundred. Five hundred thousand. All right. Yeah, that's maybe that's acceptable. Uh, and then I'm probably going to go back up to close to a million. Alright, so what are we doing here? 175. Cool. It's about, about the same count. see Tom is asking any suggestions on sculpting splashing water uh, there is a brush out there I think that someone used <coughs> excuse me sorry someone used um, uh, water sim I actually I didn't make a brush out of it but I did create my own um, water splashes using real flow back in the day um, but if you can do a run a water simulation in Maya and then uh, mesh those those point clouds together you can get some amazing water splashes because they'll be like, you know, physically accurate. Or, uh, like I said, Google, I think if you go to badking.com, if I'm not mistaken, I think they have a water splash brush. Uh, let's check it out quick. Let's do a Google. Help you out. Uh, yeah, so this will get you started, I think. Um, Let me show you here, and I'll send you the link. Yeah, okay. So, I'm gonna bring this, uh, uh, one sec here. Showing my info. <laughs> it's on the site. Uh, okay, one more second here. So splash brushes are on Bad King. Uh, boom. All right. So this is what you're gonna see. Uh, pretty spectacular stuff. So if you want to do splashes and ZBrush, I would say go to this site, and they've got some amazing free stuff. Uh, I've used their stuff before and love it. So I'll send you this link for all you ladies and gentlemen. So there you go. Yeah. Rock on. Um, man, I'm tired. <laughs> My body is done. Where are we at here? I think we're at time. 
Yeah, 10.02. So this will be where we stop. And uh, I want to thank everyone for jumping on, sharing this time. It's been fun. I'm going to save this guy out and prepare to really finish him off here in this next week or so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. <laughs> File save, yeah, totally. Um, thanks, Kyle. Uh, yeah, I think I'll be on in like another two weeks, maybe sooner, maybe later. We'll we'll see how things go. Probably sooner. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I need to say other than thank you. Uh, I'll be posting more about this um, and this progress probably on Instagram in the medium, uh, in the interim, excuse me. Uh, and next next round, I think I'm going to do something uh, significantly different than this, so you can change it up a little bit. Um, all right, guys. Thanks so much. Take care. I'll talk to you later.